Yo, what's up, guys? It's MMA Analyst here to give you my predictions for UFC uh, on Fuel TV. Struve versus Miocic or Miocic or I don't, you know. I hear his name enough times and I always forget how they say it. But anyways, let's get right down to it. Stefan Struve versus uh, Stipe. Let's put it like that. All right, so here's the situation. Um, this is a good fight for Stipe as in like a good test. He's on a nice little win streak. I think he's got nine wins in a row. Coming off a solid win over Shane Del Rosario. Uh, I mean, he's beat like a few of the you know lower guys. Uh, Philip DeFree and um, Joey Beltran. Shane Del Rosario is a good win. And then now he's kind of stepping into that are we for real situation now. And that first test is Stefan Struve. Stefan Struve, obviously, you know. He's got pretty good jujitsu. He's very big, very long and rangy. Um, but the thing about Struve is uh, he doesn't like to get hit, and when he does get hit, he gets hurt and put down pretty quick. His his uh, way out recently has been, you know, he's been facing big, heavy, horrible grapplers. So, you know, against Lavar Johnson. As long as he gets that fight to the ground, he'll be all right. He got it to the ground. Pat Berry, ditto, right? Um, so, I mean, he's just kind of been... He's well-rounded enough to beat certain guys on the feet and well-rounded enough to beat certain guys on the ground. Uh, Stipe, I don't know. His wrestling, defensive wrestling, I think is going to be good enough. His striking is definitely solid enough to really, really test Struve. And basically what I see happening in this fight is Miocic just coming forward, swinging. And Stefan Struve backing up, getting hit, and not being able to get the fight to the ground. If the fight stays on the feet, not that Stipe is an amazing striker, but he's definitely aggressive and strong enough um, to knock out uh, Stefan Struve. And that's what I think is going to happen. I think it's going to be a first round knockout for Stefan, uh, for Stipe Miocic. All right, what else? Dan Hardy versus Amir Sadala. All right, so here's the thing. If Dan Hardy loses this fight, damn. Um, Amir Sadala is not a bad fighter in any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but he's definitely somebody that Dan Hardy should be able to beat. Amir Sadala's ground game is pretty decent. His striking, you know, is always improving, or at least it improved for a while. It may not still be improving, but... It's definitely improved during his time in the UFC. He spent his entire career in the UFC coming out of uh, the Ultimate Fighter. So he literally has had to kind of grow uh, in the UFC as a as a mixed martial artist. Like right in front of everybody's eyes on the big stage. Um, Dan Hardy's striking, um, defensive wrestling. If, if um, Amir Sadala wants to take it to the ground. I think he should be able to keep it on the feet. Dan Hardy should. And uh, I don't think Amir Sadala can keep his way to a, you know 15 minutes of uh, keeping it without getting knocked out. I just think sooner or later he'll get caught. And uh, that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Dan Hardy catching Amir Sadala in the second round. It could very well be in the first round. Um, if Amir Sadala wins this fight, to me, it's him uh, outstriking Dan Hardy and kind of moving around and just not getting hit, but hitting more. And I don't really think Amir Sadala can do that for 15 minutes. Can he do it for a round? Yeah. Can he do it for three rounds? I don't really think he can. Uh, if he can, then we'll see. Um, but I don't think he can like take down Dan Hardy and try and wrestle him or anything like that. We'll see, though. Next, John Hathaway versus John McGuire. John McGuire, solid grappler. Um, and that's kind of like all I got to say with that. Uh, you know, against um, John Hathaway, I think Hathaway will be able to get, um, you know, keep the feet on the ground, if, uh, on, on, keep the fight on the feet. Uh, you know, definitely a well-rounded fighter. Good, good grappling. His only loss to Mike Pyle. I don't think John McGuire is going to be able to come over there and just, you know, try and lay on Hathaway or or anything like that. If 
Maguire wants to win this fight, he pretty much has to take it to the ground. And I don't think he's going to be able to do that. I think John Hathaway is able to outstrike him, uh, stuff takedowns. Uh, will John Hathaway finish this fight is kind of the only thing I'm thinking. And uh, I, th- I actually don't think he will. I think I think it'll go all 15 minutes of John Hathaway beating up John McGuire. That's what I got. All right, Brad Pickett, Eves Jermoyan. Simple. Brad Pickett takes his fight to the ground. Or Brad Pickett's dumb. Not that Brad Pickett's striking isn't good enough to deal with certain folks. Eves Jermoyan has a lot of flashy spinning this and this and that. But at the end of the day, taking it to the ground is an easy win. An easy win for John Hathaway, uh, for, for Brad Pickett. So in my opinion, to avoid you know what happened in his... What was that loss? Uh... To, to my boy Henan Burrell, you know, like, not to say that that's the same fight, I'm just saying, to avoid getting caught and maybe losing like that, just go out there, take Eves Jabwan down and control him and win that fight. Pretty much, that's what he should do. And as long as he doesn't get caught up in, I want to be a fight of the night or worried about stuff like that, then that's what he will do and he'll get the win. Paul Sass versus Matt Wyman. You know, I'm not going to lie. I think I love Paul Sass. I mean, you know, no homo. But, you know, as heterosexual as it could be. Nah, for real though, I'm really a big fan of one-dimensional grapplers who are able to win no matter that the opponent knows. You know, like, you know, like, not to say Paul Sass is one-dimensional, but he's one-dimensional as hell, right? Um, But that one dimension has so far been able to still get Michael Johnson and Jacob Volkman. So he just keeps working up that ladder. Paul Sass's career is like, in my opinion, is like the perfect MMA career because he started out fighting nobodies, started fighting little guys in his circuit, and then, you know, made it to the to the big leagues, fought guys at the bottom of the big leagues, and then Moving up the ladder, it's like he's able to to actually blossom and grow as a fighter rather than a lot of these guys who are tossed in too early with a killer. So I'm very happy to see what's happening with Paul Sass. Um, other fighters that I you know that are like Paul Sass that that I enjoy watching, obviously you know Aoki in his prime, um, you know anybody really who goes for. You know, Damian Maya when all he would do is try and submit people. Just dudes that go out there and it's like, I know what you're going to try and do to me. And then they train for it. And then they still tap. Like, like, uh, what's her name? Ronda Rousey, right? She just go out there, take you down arm bar. You're like, damn, what I do all that training for? So anyways, Paul Sass versus Matt Wyman. Obviously his biggest test. Jacob Volkman was a big test, but it sure as hell didn't look like it. Just another submission. One minute, 54 seconds in. However, Matt Wyman's defensive grappling, and um, at least for jiu-jitsu, I do believe is better than Jacob Volkman's. Jacob Volkman's a solid wrestler. How good is his grappling when it comes to jiu-jitsu? I don't know about all that. But uh, at the end of the day... Matt Wyman is going to take this fight to the ground at some point, I'm pretty sure. Um, he might not even be a- against it going to the ground. So when Paul Sass tries, does his thing, Matt Wyman might just be like, I can stay in his garden and be good because, you know, people have to submit you to win. So I'll just stay in his garden and beat him up from the guard. Uh, at this point, I am pretty certain that Paul Sass is able to submit anybody that isn't like in the top echelon, right? Now, not to say that he can't get knocked out first. Or not to say that he can't get damaged and lose another way. But this fight's probably going to go to the ground. Most fights do go to the ground. And when and if this fight goes to the ground early, I think uh, Matt Wyman's going to be in trouble. Um, yeah, if he gets out of the first round, he's still probably in trouble. Obviously, Matt Wyman has, you know, we know what he, you know, he's solid wrestling, you know, decent striking. Um, he's a... Definitely a more well-rounded fighter than Paul Sass. But I think Paul Sass's strength, you know, that triangle, heel hook, 
grappling off of his back, getting the fight to the ground anyway, doing jumping, rolling, doing anything, just pulling guard. I think that strength is kind of stronger than Matt Wyman's well-rounded skills. So I'm going to pick Paul Sass via submission of the night. Uh, Shane Mills versus Dwayne Bang Ludwig. I'd like to see Dwayne Bang Ludwig get a win, but at the same time, I kind of want to see Shane Mills get a win. But regardless of who I want to see get a win, I think Shane Mills is actually going to get the win. Um, I think he's going to come out really aggressive, uh, r- really hard hitter. Um, you know, overall, I know he's been working on his grappling and his wrestling. So at the end of the day, I think he's going to be able to mix it up more. And um, I see him getting, uh, you know, tagging Dwayne Bang Ludwig and eventually knocking him out. Um, late first round or second round. This definitely could be fight of the night, by the way. Um, what else? Why do I always say Dwayne Bang Ludwig? Like, he's one of the only dudes, and I noticed this in other videos, where I actually say the nickname. Like, I always say Dwayne Bangle. I don't call him Dwayne. I don't call him Ludwig. I don't call him Dwayne Ludwig. I was Dwayne Bangle. I don't know why, but it's just something that I noticed. All right, the undercard. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with, actually, Manua over Kingsbury. I'm going to go Ogle over Corasani, Tavares, Gunnar Nelson, and Robert Peralta. So there you go. Those are my picks for UFC on Fuel TV. My recap. When is this thing? My recap will be late. Because I got a battle on Saturday. Semifinals, King of the Dot Grand Prix against Arcane. I want to thank everybody who is um, saying, you know, them kind words about me potentially, you know, stopping with the videos. I still got to make that video, but I don't want to make it too early because then I got to talk about it more. So I'm just kind of, you know, just kind of, I think it's better to say I'm going to leave in the future than say this is my last video out of nowhere. You know what I mean? So that's what it is. I'm also not going to slack on the videos. You know, I'm going to do it just like I always did. Like, really late with barely any time before the fights. You know, just to keep it regular. And, uh, yeah. So, that's that. So, thanks everybody who said anything about, you know, yo, I'm going to miss you, dog. All that stuff. I appreciate that. Um, I will have a explanation video closer to February. I actually made my decision, like, you know, a few weeks prior to the video. But, you know. Anyways. And, yeah, thanks for everybody who's saying anything about the battles and King of the Dot and all that stuff. It's a lot of fun. I'm actually going to be making my debut in the UK in October. So, that's cool. MMA, it's important. Peace.